last week on Soul. How good we are, or how excellent we perform, or how brilliant our execution is in anything, rejection and refusal and hearing no and some sort of negative response still is a potential reality. So not always are you going to sell everyone you talk to. It's just as simple as that. And not always is someone saying no to you a bad thing. I can tell you this. Strategy number two, learn from this. Okay, you got rejected, or somebody refused, or somebody told you no. Take a step back and ask yourself one simple question. Look, if you're gonna be able to positively overcome and benefit from rejection and refusal, you're gonna have to realize you're gonna have to develop some new habits. So anytime somebody rejects you or refuses you or says no, real simple. That was last week on Sold. This week starts now. Strategy number three, listen closer. Salespeople are notorious for running their mouth and talking too much. You know, I really believe if most of us would just shut up and learn to use our ears twice as much as our mouth, I mean, we got two ears, one mouth, makes sense, doesn't it? If we would just do this and learn to listen in and focus in on the customer, you know, not only would we understand them better and build better relationships, but I also think that we would probably reduce the amount of rejection, refusal, and the rejection and the amount of no's we get simply because by listening more, we're gonna be able to understand things better. We're gonna be able to make better choices. We're gonna be able to learn more. And ultimately, we're gonna end up coming up with better solutions to any selling situation we encounter ourselves in. <music> Strategy number four. Ask more and better questions. Very, very often, salespeople don't ask enough questions to really understand and see a full 360 degrees around the selling situation that they find themselves in. I cannot tell you how many times I've worked with sales organizations and found that their biggest and number one problem was that they didn't get into the habit of asking their customers enough questions or questioning the situation that they're in enough to really understand how to be able to come up with solutions to problems. I realize that many of us aren't in the habit of asking questions. We might think that asking questions is rude or somehow it's inappropriate. However, I promise you this, especially in a selling situation, if you're asking questions with the attitude behind the questions of trying to help and wanting to better understand, not only will your customer not have a problem with answering the questions, they're also gonna feel that you're more of a professional because you're seeking to understand the situation first before you respond with your mouth. And I can promise you this, not only by asking questions will you be able to reduce the amount of rejection you get, but it's also gonna strengthen the relationships with your customers as well. Strategy number five, be more creative and more original. When we're faced with rejection or refusal or hearing the word no, it's no different than when we're faced with a problem. And I'm sure you realize that very often the solution to a problem is not in the obvious, but it's in the creative and it's in the unusual or the unique. Here's what I wanna challenge you on. When you hear no, when you are rejected, when you get refusal, take a step back and not only learn from it, but ask yourself this question. How can I come up with an innovative solution to this problem? Because that's what it is. Or how can I come up with an innovative strategy to overcome this no? Or how can I do something different that maybe no one else has thought of that can give me an advantage or me an edge? You know, here's something that I think that we all need to realize. And that is change is inevitable, but growth is optional. You know, you're gonna encounter change and problems and no's and difficulties and rejection your whole life. The question is whether or not you wanna grow and create and innovate to be able to turn those negatives into positives. So next time you hear no, take a step back and don't only learn from it, but ask yourself this, what can I do to turn this no into a yes that maybe no one's ever thought of or no one's ever considered? Strategy number six, get help. 
Look, if you've got problems or you've got a situation where you're hearing no very often or you're getting a lot of rejection, you're getting a lot of refusal, there's no shame in asking for help. In fact, and I'm going to talk to men here for just a second, asking for help shows wisdom, it shows intelligence, it shows courage, and you know what it shows? It shows that you're somebody that's really in desire of being the best. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. Why is it that we as humans are so dumb not to go to people that are smarter than us and more successful than us and get help and understanding and learn from the best? Why is that? You know, this is a big problem for men. Ladies, you have the problem as well sometimes. I want to encourage you, if you're getting a lot of rejection or you've got problems in your sales career, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. In fact, getting help could make the difference between your success and you just living a life where you're only surviving. Strategy number seven, change a critical aspect of your selling. You know, when I was first in sales, I remember reading lots of books and very often they told me happy motivational things that just weren't true. They would tell me things like, well, you know, people don't object to you, but they object to your product. They would tell me that the problem wasn't with me, but it was with the situation. Look, let's get real here. If you're hearing no, or you're getting a lot of rejection or a lot of refusal, very, very likely the problem is with you. Now, I know that's not very positive and it's not going to make you feel good, but at least I'm being honest with you and truthful. If you are having difficulty in any aspect of your selling, I would strongly suggest seeking out the help of first and foremost people around you in your organization that have proven success. Whether it's other salespeople, or whether it's somebody in management, or whether it's somebody else in the organization that might have already had experience in sales. Outside of that, look for help in your industry. And if you can't find help there, then ultimately look outside to a professional. There's nothing wrong with somebody analyzing how you sell and giving you solutions on how to change a critical aspect of that. I know from experience that there have been many times in my selling career that either I was doing something wrong or because I started working in a new industry, I developed a habit or started doing something that wasn't really appropriate. And it took somebody from the outside to help me. And there's nothing wrong with you changing what you're doing and developing new habits to help you be more successful. Understand that yes, one of the reasons why you might get rejection or hear no is because of you. But here's the great thing, and this is what I love so much about humanity and about us as individuals, is that no matter what we do, we can always change and we can always get better. And ultimately, I believe, if you focus on going the extra mile and doing more and trying to be more excellent and trying to get more perfect every day, not only will you be able to minimize the amount of rejections and the amount of no's you hear, you're also going to enjoy a greater measure of success in all areas of your life.